out. Yes, all right. Uh, just to give perhaps a parallel uh, uh, story. Uh, I don't know if any of you know this. You, know, you all know, uh, you heard of the Theosophical Society. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know about Mary, Mary, um, what's the name? Uh, Mary Besant. Annie Besant. One day, uh, when I seen Ali Besant was always talking about the messenger to come, the messenger to come, the messenger to come. You know that, yeah? Yeah. Um, she organized a, a huge conference in, in Holland. Um, I think it was in Sais, if I'm not mistaken, um, where uh, she invited the, 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 the creme de la creme, how do you say that in English? The highest aristocracy in Holland in those days, and all the richest people in Holland, uh, to come to hear this great saint from India. She invited, uh, she often invited sages, uh, Indian, uh, Indian uh, teachers. So she invited her to Nan Khan, who gave a fantastic speech. And um, after the speech, <coughs> she called her to Nan Khan to have an interview with her. Are you married? <laughs> Do you have children? Do you eat meat? You are not a messenger. <laughs> Just like that. Then what happened is that half of the audience followed her to Nath Khan and the other half stayed in the video. And among that other half was several of the big leaders of the super movement, uh, two of them, uh, whose names I want to mention, the stories I must tell today, uh, one was um, uh, Mushtafa Zulman, uh, who offered to buy a house for Mushtafa in Shuret, in Paris. On this name. Huh? On this name. Yeah, and and extraordinary thing. She bought it on his name, not on her name, on his name. And until the near until I don't know, thirty eight, I don't remember exactly but the name of that time exaggerated. In any way, or back to thirty, don't ask me dates. Uh, in any for at least ten years. She financed the whole family, the, not only the children, but, I mean, but the uncles, the whole family was financed uh, 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 in that house, which still exists today. And um, so she was one of those who followed in our house. Um, the other was a um, woman that was a tremendously rich uh, Dutch person. In those days, of course later he lost a lot of money, but anyway, in those days he was tremendously rich. And he wanted to offer a home to a uh, husband down town in Switzerland on the, near the lake. Uh, and husband for a few weeks. Um, I think you understand why. No, I don't. <laughs> because, because the heart quality was not the same. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Now here, this interesting follow-up. Baron Mantel called Hazanar Khan Prince, because he knew that he was the descendant of the Sultan. And um, <clears throat> Khan called him Baron. One day, uh, Baron from Khan said to Khan, "Stop 
calling me Baron. Some of my other students start calling me Prince. <laughs> so what to do? So Hassan Al Khan said, well, I will give you a Sufi name. Then I can call you by a Sufi name. So Baron asked her, what does it mean? started conversation and so then she invited him in that house. That house was the house of the, uh, the Dutch council in, in, in Switzerland who later became the national representative. And that's where he met uh, with Zanetti and, 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 and Jacques where they created for the first time that was in 1922 where the Sufi movement was created and the order which had been in London was closed, I mean closed in London, but was transported into the Sufi movement in Geneva. This is a historical story. It's a magic event. And then um, as of that moment everything started. Now, why did Hazrat Dal Khan call this Sufi movement? <coughs> why didn't he want call it Sufi order like it had been in <coughs> Because this is the the, the Sufi movement is the channel of the message. 
when the message is a flow of energy. A movement is something that moves on. The argument is no, this is very important. It's not just that just happens. So, with intention, he uses the word movement, uh, uh, thinking of a, con a, a, a continual flow of the message. Uh, he, he went away from the order, which is stagnant, into a movement which flows on, onwards. A new impulse. And I have the courage to say today, at that instant, Hazrat Nasan closed the doors of his connection with the Chishya order. And there is a Gatika, number 14. And if anybody wants that, um, you have probably read it and never understood what was in it. If any of you want it, ask Kamila, she can send it to you. And that same, and that same text is also in the biography, uh, in, in, the uh, in, in, in the Brown books. And many of you have read it and not understood what was in it. In that text, which is a historical text, as Khan says, I owe so much to the Chistia order, but now the time has come, these are his own words, the account is closed. That means, now that's past, I'm grateful, and now we go on. The new impulse, the soon message, we are no more, uh, we do not give any more priority to any particular Paraka. Uh, 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 now it is a universal Paraka, the message, not an individual Paraka, the, indi the universal Paraka. Very important point. Maybe that's a good time for us to uh, 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 have our lunch together. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I agree, but there's one more story I just must say. I must tell you. You got our attention. <laughs> We actually would love to sit here all day. But, Give me uh, five minutes more. I must tell this story. Yes. Yes. What do you say, folks? Yes. 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 In 1926, when in, on the 13th September 1926, when uh, the foundation stone of, of the temple of the universal worship was was was, uh, was placed in, in, in the grounds, it's rare. Husband and I found placed under that stone the silsila, knowing very well, putting a piece of paper under the stone in the earth, it would, of course, be gone. You can think logically, you put a piece of paper in the earth, of course it's gone after a few years. Why did he, did he do it? Because uh, that silsila was, for him, very sacred. But he could not tear it up. You cannot tear something, something sacred you cannot tear up, especially according to Indian laws. But if you offer it to the Mother Earth, the Mother Earth will take care of it. Because at that moment, and this is a historical moment, that where he was proving to the Sufis, now the account with the Chistia order is closed. I had to have this book. Why don't we uh, close singing? Uh, may 